In this Adobe Premiere tutorial, I'm going to show you how to teleport and have the fabric of space time ripple behind you as you go to your new destination. This can be done with simple editing in Premiere as long as you set up your shot on a tripod. The first thing to do is bring in the clip, drag it to the right on your timeline. Here you'll notice that I have a blank plate of my clip. Then I have the character come in, jump and teleport, and then jump and reappear. The first thing to do is to separate the blank part of the clip and where the teleporting happens. Before I do that though, I'm going to unlink the audio because I'm not going to be using the audio from the clip. So right click, unlink, then I'll click the bottom and delete it. Now I just have video. Move the playhead forward until the character comes on screen. Then I'll press C. This is now the blank clip. I'll move forward up until the point that the jump happens. This is the teleporting. So right before the character comes down, so somewhere around here, I'll press C. Then I'll move forward to when we reappear. So somewhere around here, right as the character begins to come down, I'll press C and cut it. Then press V to get the arrow tool and delete the center section. Then we'll continue to move the playhead forward until the character goes off screen. Then press C or W to delete the right hand side. Now we can bring these two clips on top of the blank clip. Just by placing the clips on top of the blank clip, we will already have a teleport effect, and this may be good enough for your project. So just by having that edit, it will appear as your character is teleporting. But notice at this second teleport, we have a bit of a color change. So you see the one background clip looks like this, and then the other one is a little bit lighter. We can fix this with color correction. Select this clip, then at the top, select color. This will bring up the color editing workspace. You may not see the Lumetri scopes. It may still be on effects controls, but up at the top, you can select on Lumetri scopes. Then we can click this little wrench and we can select comparison view. This allows us to see two clips. The one on the left is the reference. So move this little blue dot to where we get to the center clip. You can find it by going to where your character jumps and then backtracking a bit. So right here is the darker clip. And you can already see that. You can see that this clip is brighter than this one. Move the playhead in just a little bit. Then over on the Lumetri scopes, this shows the brightness. And as you can see, these shapes are a little bit different. This one on the left is the reference clip. This one is the one that's too bright. So then we can use these controls to move the shadows. And you can see now that these parts right here are moving down. So I can just line that up. I can lower the contrast a little bit. That looks pretty good. These shapes look a bit even. Now let's check how that looks. I'm gonna click on the wrench and then go back to composite view. So it's not perfect, but it's a lot it's a lot smoother of a transition. We can continue to improve this with some masking. So first I'm going to click editing to go back to the editing workspace. I'll click this top clip, press alt or option to drag select it. Then I'm going to move the playhead forward until the character comes down. This is approximately one, two, three, four, five, six frames. I'll press C and cut those frames. I'll press V to get the arrow tool and delete this top section. Now I will select the top clip, go to the front, make sure it's selected, and then on the opacity, click the oval mask. I can move this into position and resize it. Just make it bigger than your character. It's not important to be perfectly accurate here. Then we want to increase the feather a lot. So now our feather of our mask is increased. And then we want to click on the mask path stopwatch and then move forward one frame. Make sure you select the mask and then move it as the character comes down. Great. Then let's select the longer clip. Move to the beginning of it. Click on the opacity stopwatch to set a keyframe. Make the opacity zero. 
Then move to the end of the short clip. Make sure you still have the bottom clip selected, then change the opacity to 100%. So now we have the two clips will fade together. Let's watch that. So that's much better. We don't have that harsh transition. When you're filming outdoors, sometimes the sunlight will change and you can use this masking technique to make everything look smoother. Okay, so now let's add some more special effects now that we have our basic teleport happening. We'll start with the first one. So I'm going to move to the end and then come back five frames. One, two, three, four, five. So right about here, I'll press C to cut. Then I'm going to lock the bottom video layer. This is the blank video layer because sometimes it will automatically select. Like for example, if I select this clip and then I'm moving, it'll automatically select this one. I don't want to do that. I'm only working on these clips. So I'll click the padlock. And now if I select this clip and my playhead moves, it's only going to be on this one. So that's very convenient. Sometimes when you have multi-level video, it can be confusing. Just make sure that if you want to edit this clip, you undo the padlock. So I'm going to go to the beginning of this clip and then click on the pen. And then I'll press the tilde key to make this screen full screen. And I'm just going to roughly mask out the character. This does not have to be perfect. And you want to use as few control points as possible. So here I'm clicking around, one in the middle, and then I can adjust these up just a little bit. Then I'll press the tilde key to go back to this view. I want to click the stopwatch on the mask path, mask feather, and mask expansion. Okay, so these three uh, keyframes need to be set on the first frame. Then I'll move forward one frame. I'll click on the name mask one, and then I can see the mask. Then we can zoom in and make any adjustments that are necessary, keep our mask where it needs to be. Then I can move forward one frame by pressing the right arrow tool, bring my mask in, then press forward with the right arrow tool, adjust the mask. And again, this doesn't have to be perfect, it just needs to be close to the character for this effect. Then move forward one more frame, adjust the mask, and then forward one more frame and it is all done. Press the tilde key to go back to full screen. So now we have a mask that goes around our character. The next step is to move to the first frame of that short clip. Now we're going to adjust the mask expansion. Make sure that the keyframe stopwatch is selected and then move forward one frame. We'll increase the negative expansion so it will eat into our character a little bit. So now it's starting to eat in. Then we'll go forward one frame and we can increase that expansion in a negative direction. Move forward one frame, increase that expansion, move forward one frame, increase that expansion, and then it's gone. So now we have our character is going bloop and disappearing. But we want to add a little bit of feather. So hold shift and go to the first frame. Then we will keyframe feather. So then go to the second frame, add some more feather. Then the last frame, add some more feather. Then the next frame, add more feather. And then finally on this frame, add more feather. So now we have the person fading away. So just with that masking, we already have a nice effect. But we can add some texture to this effect. So hold shift and make sure you're at the first frame. Then in the project window to the left, click on effects. Type in turbulent. Then we have this effect called turbulent displace. Drag it onto the short clip. We want to keyframe this effect. So at the beginning, we want to have the amount on B pretty much, and we can keyframe both of these, then move to the end, and we can either increase the amount, uh, decrease the size. This is, this is up to you in the look that you want. So now if we see this, we can see that we are warping out. And one thing you can also do is make sure you keyframe the evolution. So click the stopwatch on the first frame for evolution, then go to the end and just rotate this, you know, 360 degrees, and then you'll see that will be animated as it goes away. And then the last little trick we can do is in the effects window, we'll type in blur, and then we'll get a directional blur. Drop that on the clip. And this is defaults to up and down. So in the beginning, we'll click the stopwatch for a blur length of zero on the first frame. 
move to the end, and then increase it to say 70. And then let's look at that. So now we have our character is going to go up, and then they blur in a vertical direction and disappear. Very nice. We can add two more effects to make this even more interesting. Click on your project window. Here, I made a teleport burst particle effect in After Effects. This movie clip is linked in the description. Drag it onto your clip. Notice that it's way too long and way too huge. First, click on it, and then in the effects controls, we can make it smaller, so approximately the size of our figure. And then we can press R on our keyboard to rate stretch it much faster. So this will make it the clip go real fast. I'm going to zoom in a little bit on my timeline. We want this effect to be just a little bit longer than our teleport. So I'm going to press R again and rate stretch it down. But watch the effect. It is getting bigger. We kind of want it to start big and get smaller as the person zips out of existence. So I'm going to right click and then on speed duration, it says 690%. That's how much we shortened it. If I press negative, it's the same as clicking reverse speed. Now it goes from big and goes zoop right out of existence. So let's move this into position, click on it, then press V, double click on the clip in the program monitor, and then move it on top of your character. Problem is we can't see our character. So let's go ahead and change its blending mode to screen. That will make the black disappear. And let's check our timing. So now it looks pretty good. We could probably change the position of this. So I'm going to come back here, double click on this, and then move it up to where the person actually is. And let's see how that looks. Very cool. So we get just a little bit of energy waves starting. In fact, we could probably have this press the rate stretch tool and be just a little bit longer. So now we have some energy forming as the person jumps up in the air and then they zip away and then they're gone. Okay, so I'm happy with that. The next thing to do is to make the fabric of space time jiggle with all this energy. So we're going to right click in the project panel and we'll make a new item and we can make an adjustment layer. Press OK to make it the size of your sequence and then drag that adjustment layer onto the clip. Here we can have it start with the jump and then press C and we want it to be just a little bit longer than the burst. So I'll guess right about there and then delete the rest of it. Go to the first frame of the adjustment layer and then we're going to go to effects again and this time we'll get a turbulent displace. So I'll drag turbulent displace onto the adjustment layer. And right now it's going to turbulent displace everything. So on the first part of the clip, we want to really make it uh, displace. So you can go overboard with this, but we want, you know, some displacement, maybe 100 is too much. Let's try 80. We definitely will notice that. And then the size, you can change, uh, you can change the size, how big you want that to be. So if you change it to super big, it'll get all warpy. So I think I'm going to put it down to 85. I think that's plenty. Once you have how much space time is warping, click on size and amount, the stopwatches to set keyframes, move to the end of your adjustment layer, and then change the amount to zero and size down to two, which is the minimum. Now you'll see that it warps space time and then stops, but it wouldn't warp all of space time. It would only be where our character is jumping. So let's fix that. Make sure you have the adjustment layer selected. Then on the turbulent displace, select the mask for the effect. Make sure you select the mask for the effect, not the mask for opacity. Just click the circle. It will appear on your program monitor. Move it over into position on top of the character. You can move this down and change its size. And then we want to add some feather to that mask. And now it will only turbulent displace where our character is. Let's take a look. So you can see that little wiggle right after. So that's just us ripping into space time to have our jump. And the last thing to do to really sell that effect is to have a sound effect. So I found this fire torch movement from Adobe Sound Effects, and I'll put that right there. Excellent. So now we have a sound effect and our character jumps. 
Now we just need to reverse these effects for the coming back. So I can go ahead and take this burst, hold Alt or Option to duplicate it, bring it right here, and notice it's in the wrong position. So make sure you select this version, double click it here, and then I can move it over to where my character is. So now I have my burst. And so we can either keep it the same way or we can reverse it. I think I'm gonna reverse it because it's popping into existence. So right click, speed duration. And this time we're going to uncheck reverse speed. And then now it's going to start small and pop into existence just like that. So I think that's pretty good. And I like it starting before. I think I'm gonna have it start even more before the character. So I'm gonna move this in so we kind of see this space field rumbling. There we go. And we can do the same thing with the mask. So we select uh, this character. And for this mask, we could probably get away with just adjusting the mask expansion. Since we already have a circle mask, this will show you that you don't always need to have a perfectly keyed mask around a character. So I'm going to click the mask feather and mask expansion keyframes. What I'll do is just lower the mask expansion until my character, just before my character disappears. Then I'll move to the end and I'll make the mask expansion zero. Let's just see how that looks. So just by doing that, we get a pretty cool popping into existence effect. If you want to keyframe more accurately around the character, that's fine, but I think that works pretty well. Okay, so the last thing to do is to add our space time warp. So we can copy this adjustment layer. So we'll press option, bring it over here. We need to change the position of the mask. So click this new adjustment layer, click on the mask name. You'll see it over here. Click in the center of the mask and then bring it over to where your new effect is. So let's take a look to see how that is. And you can either have this be reversed or the same. So we change the direction of the teleport burst. Over here, we can also change the direction of the turbulent displace. So if I press the tilde key in my project panel here, then I can copy these two keyframes that are on the amount and size, copy them, move to the end, make sure that this is highlighted, and then I can press Control V or Command V, and then I can come back over here, and these keyframes now should be zero and two. So now it's getting more turbulent as the power comes in. Press tilde key to go back to full screen. Then I'll press spacebar. Yeah, that looks a little bit better. So we can see that we're getting the turbulence comes in. Here we are, and then we are back to normal. Excellent. So then we just need to add a sound, and this time I'm gonna add a different sound. Here's a sci-fi electronic sound. I'll put that in right there. Let's see how that sounds. Excellent. So now we have a funky sound and we'll add some ambiance backyard noise also from Adobe Sound Effects on the bottom here. I'll zoom out just a little bit, make sure that's at the beginning. Press C to cut this at the end. Then in our effects panel, we'll type in fade and we'll do an exponential fade right at the end of that clip and we can shorten it a little bit. The last thing we may wanna do is since we have two different sound effects, maybe the power used when we come in is different. So this teleport burst, right now if you look at it, it is white. What if we wanted a black teleport burst? Well, you can make one black, but we already have one. So let's change it up. So select that clip. Then in the effects panel, type invert, select under channel invert, drop it on the teleport burst, now it is inverted and our screen blend mode no longer works because there's hardly any black. So now if we change our blending mode to multiply, multiply will remove all the white. And now we have this black burst. So here we can see. Nice. Either way works fine. Just decide how you want your burst to look. Let's take a look at our finished effect. So hopefully you can use teleport effects in your video projects.